Good morning. It is with great pleasure that I enter, that I welcome you all to the 2022-2023 graduating class for CCA. So first off, just on behalf of the staff here at CCA, we want to thank you all so much for entrusting us with your most precious, precious possessions. And so today, we're going to celebrate all the hard work they have put in, you all have put in supporting them, and so it's going to be an amazing graduation. A couple of quick ground rules before I turn it over to the shepherd of this house. But first off, this is not your typical graduation. So if you've ever been to a CCA graduation, we're going to turn up. All right? So we're not, so we, so we not much for formalities here. When you hear your baby name called, make noise like you know what they've been through. So with that being said, I'm going to invite up the shepherd of this house. Thank you so much to Mount Carmel, uh, Pastor King, and all the deacons who have done all the leg work to make this possible for us. Um, so I would just right now invite up Pastor Kenneth W. King to give us our opening prayer. Let us pray. God, our Father, how we thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for the privilege of pouring into others. We ask, oh God, that our work would not be in vain, for we have now committed ourselves to being an aid to someone else. Now, God, we ask that you bless these graduates, that they may be able to be a light in this world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. At this time, we would like to welcome the, uh, one of our board of directors to speak um, to you from, on behalf of our board. We do have our board chairperson here, Ms. Keila Selders. And please welcome Destiny Sykes Okumabua, who is on the CCA board of directors, but who's also the president of the Phyllis Wheatley Neighborhood Association. Destiny. How's everybody doing? Good. So as Christy said, my name is Destiny. I'm not going to torture you with my last name, but you can just call me Destiny. Uh, yes, I am a board of, uh, on the board for CCA as well as the president of the Neighborhood Association that CCA will graciously and amazingly and warmly be welcomed into here in the next uh, few. So we're very excited to have you. But on behalf of the board as well as the neighborhood graduates, first of all, we want to say congratulations. Um, we are all so proud of you. You did it. Uh, we know that you have worked so hard to get here. We know the tireless hours. Many people don't know your journey. I'm sure a lot of people in this room know your journey, but when you step outside these walls, not many people do. So we want you to hold your head high and be proud of who you are. Be proud of what you've been through. Be proud of getting to this point. Like this is, this is no easy feat. Anybody who has gotten to this point knows how hard it is. So we want to make sure that we are celebrating you, giving you your flowers, and just know that you've got a whole community, you've got a board of directors, you've got a room full of people behind these walls, you have a whole neighborhood who's here to support you on your journey. So like I said, you did it, and congratulations. Hi, I'm Christy, and I work here. Um, I have the privilege today of recognizing our board of directors who I've briefly mentioned um, our donors and the circle of support. So one thing I want to say is our board of directors is a group of volunteers who have professional careers, they have families, they have full-time lives already, but because of their commitment to you, our students, and to our school, staying on track, making sure that we're providing a quality education, making sure that we have everything that we need to serve you well, they dedicate their time to serve on the board for three to six years. And that means that they're meeting monthly, they're looking at the numbers, they're raising money, they're um, overseeing the major decisions that we make, they supervise us, they do um, look and make sure that we're providing you guys with the services you need. 
And just this week, they voted to approve to begin the remodel of the Phyllis Wheatley Gym. And so this time next year, that's right. This time next year, we should be able to go into a fully renovated gym space. And we expect all of the graduates to be here to celebrate the 2024 graduates. Next, I want to just mention the donors. So many of you know that CCA is a faith-based school, but we do not charge tuition. And so our students don't pay to come to school, but instead they give back to the community in a variety of ways. But that means that every single dollar that pays for lights or field trips or lunches or teacher salaries or books or computers or anything that we need comes from donations. And so we have some donations that come from senior citizens that are on a fixed income that give $25 a month and just faithfully pray and send money to help pay for CCA. We have churches who support you. We have big foundations that support you and corporate sponsorships. So there are literally hundreds of people that have made today possible. So I just want to say a public thank you to the donors that support the work of CCA. Finally, if you are a mom, a dad, an auntie, a grandma, a grandpa, or a supporter of somebody who is graduating from CCA today, please, first let's start with the moms. Let's, let's have the moms stand up. Moms and grandmothers, please stand up. Yes, now let's have the aunties and dads and uncles and grandfathers stand, please. Okay, and if you have not already stood, if you're a sibling or another circle of support member for your graduate, please stand up at this time. Yes, yes, yes. So you were the first ones to love and believe in these students. You have walked alongside them for many years. And you might have been the one that drove up to our little yellow metal building thinking, what kind of a storage shed is this? and believed that this was a whole real school and entrusted us to educate your child. So thank you so much for walking with them and walking them to our doors so that we can walk with them through this important next step. Good morning. I am Brandy and I have the opportunity to recognize another special group um, or three. We have so many people in addition to those that Ms. Christie just mentioned that help to support and contribute to what happens here at CCA. First, I want to recognize our volunteers. We have volunteers who bring lunch to the school, affectionately known as the Lunch Bunch. They provide meals for our students and staff so that we are fed. We are so grateful for them coming to feed us. We have tutors who come to support students in their academics. And we have volunteers who help with case management. We provide services for our students in addition to their education to help them um, be able to focus in the classroom. And we have some volunteers that help with that. And we have volunteers who help with a variety of projects. If you are here and you are a CCA volunteer, would you please stand at this time so we can recognize you? Okay. <laughs> and even now, we have some volunteers who are taking care of our lunch for after graduation. So again, very grateful for all that they do. We also have churches that support the school. Um, one that we are in right now. So another thank you to Mount Carmel Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you for all that you do for us being here today. We also have a group of churches through um, a platform called Care Portal. 
who help to meet very specific needs that we share, and we are so grateful for each of those churches. And lastly, we have some community partners that I want to thank. And if you are here and with one of these groups, I would love for you to stand. We have um, first some of our case management partners, Midtown Family Dental, America's Best Winwood. Um, these two help with dental needs, with glasses, um, with eye exams, and so many of the things that students need. I mean, if you're sitting in the classroom and you can't see, how are you gonna get anything done? We're so grateful to have them help with that. We have the Center for Integrative Counseling and Psychology that helps to provide counseling for our students and psychoeducation. We have the Grace Center. We have Beacon Hill, who provides reading tutoring. You and I spread the light with vocational training and just work skills that also helps us with vocational training. If you are with any of those partners, would you please stand? Thank you all so much for supporting and contributing to what we do. So in addition to all the community partners, in addition to the foundation that you all have already laid, I would just love to introduce our staff to you all. And so many of you, many of you already know our staff, but um, I just, I'm going to go in the order that they're seated, just to kind of give you all an introduction to who we are and the services that we do provide. So starting on my right, we have Ms. Jean Woods. So Ms. Jean Woods is our case manager, and so those services that Ms. Brandy was talking about, the, the dental appointments, the eye exams, the medical things, she's the one who she may have reached out to you all to help set up some of those services. So we have a deep-rooted belief that if a student is not stable, if a student is not safe or cared for, then the education piece makes no sense. And so that's something that we try and do here with our students here at CCA, and that's Ms. Jean who does that for us. We have Ms. Brandy Johnson next to her. Ms. Brandy Johnson is our Director of Engagement, and so engaging with all the intersections of CCA, whether that's volunteers, donors, um, students and their services, just so many things that she helps us do. Next to her, we have our Executive Director, Dr. Christy Littenberg. In addition to just really casting vision for the organization, Ms. Christy helps uh, run things. She does all the interactions with the community partners and really helping CCA get to that next level. Um, next to, we'll start here. We have Mr. Herb Brown. So many of you know that we're trying to really take the next step as a program and not just do the academics, because the academics is only a part of it. But as we all know, the next piece is what, what, what are you doing next? Whether that's school, whether that's vocations. And so Mr. Herb is really helping our students enter into the workforce um, in a way that's gonna help them have a transformational life. And so that's what Mr. Herb does. Next to him, we have Mr. Tyree Mobley. So Mr. Tyree is our master liberal arts teacher on our P1 pathway. And so Mr. Tyree really just uh, led the charge and the academic portion for our teacher-led students and making sure they had a quality education every day they came to the school. Next to them, we have Ms. Sydney Weaver. So Ms. Sydney Weaver is our director of operations. One of, I think, the kids' favorite service that she does is she makes sure your kids eat every day. And so she was the one who provided the lunches, but she also just in, interacted with volunteers, donors, um, and all manner of operations. And last but not least, we have Mr. Billy Rose. Billy Rose is our graduation counselor, and so he works with your students from the moment they interact with CCA with an application. He helps them get enrolled, go through the graduation process, all the way to this point that we get to celebrate today, which is where they graduate and we get to celebrate them. And so 
That's our staff. Again, thank you so much for trusting them with us. And how about if we give it up for Mr. Wayne Sims, our awesome principal. So now I have the pleasure of introducing a special guest. Um, so this is something that I'm very excited for our students to see. Um, so we have an amazing, amazing young man. Um, I'm gonna read his autobiography, but then uh, I'm gonna give you just my thoughts. But we have Mr. Cristati Woods, AKA Black Caesar. He is a Mississippi native by way of Dallas, Texas. Most notably known for his Emmy-nominated performance in diversity, equity, and inclusion with the Dallas Cowboys on his poetic visual called Change. He's collaborated with the Texas Rangers on nationally televised poems titled Turn Up and Ascensions. He has a passion for uplifting his community through poetic enrichment programs within the inner city using a social and emotional learning curriculum. Cristati is a poet, an author, a filmmaker, an artist, a nonprofit leader and owner, and he's eager to better the world around him through artistry. Cristati graduated from Texas A&M University Commerce with a degree in education. The self-published author of the poetic thriller, Lend Me Your Ears, and writer of the EP, A Moment in Poetry. Beyond that, for our students, I want you all to know that your stories are powerful. And I think that this artist, being able to show you a way that you can utilize your story to move people and change the world is so powerful. So Chris, I now turn it over to you, brother. So how y'all doing? Uh, my name is Black Caesar. I'm so grateful to be up here to share with y'all today. This is, this is very momentous for y'all, man. I'm grateful, I'm thankful, I'm excited for y'all's future. Y'all really, think about what you wanna do. Think about tomorrow. You have options, you got choices. Look at where you are today, you understand? I'm so grateful to Dr. Christy Lentenberg. She was my administration whenever I was in sixth, seventh, eighth grade. So she's been uplifting students and loving students and empowering students for a long time. So utilize her. Utilize your teachers, man. I have a poem I'm gonna share with y'all and I'm gonna get out y'all here. I know we got a lot of family in here, a lot of friends in here, and it's just a, it's a beautiful experience. Again, I have a couple books for y'all too, so everybody gonna get a copy of my book for y'all just to keep and you know, just rock out with it and hopefully it means something to you. Hopefully you can take something with you from it. All right, real quick, when I say feeling good, you say feeling great. Feeling good. Feeling great. Feeling good. Feeling great. Chairman Fred Hampton once said, you can kill the revolutionary but you cannot kill the revolution. Shouting gospels of triumph, projecting our ancestors' strength with my conviction for righteousness, standing on the shoulders of giants, firmly grounded in Proverbs, honoring thy mother and father, leading regimes of solidarity through the doors of sovereignty unjustly closed on our culture, I will show you how great I am. Naysayers turned spectators must witness my resurrection basking in black snow for I am the phoenix soaring ages above their chauvinistic plots. I be a man, strong and loud, bold and proud. I be a revolutionary, y'all. Standing with the heart of a lion and the mind of a maniac, liberating and orchestrating the coalition of our people, of all people. I'm the voice to those who have none. I will show you how great I am, how great I can be. Just watch me shock the world. Please, y'all. God bless, and thank you so much for allowing the time. At this time, we will watch a recap video of this school year. It's for all my folks who got legal jobs. 
and beat the odds, you feel me? We ain't supposed to be here, never thought we'd see it. Now we live in proof, tell the world to believe it. Congratulations, thank God we made it. They told us we was nothing, now I know they hate it. But a dope dealer, but a hope killer Supposed to brag on the guns and the coke kilos Dropping mollies in a coke zero Ashamed of my education That I'm finally off probation That I quit smoking, got a wife and kids And I'm a real father, no vacancy I'm a black man who beat them I'm Supposed to be locked up with no job Never should have went to college or learned who God is You added up and saw I See, I never knew my pops I've been abused, ran from the cops I went to school, I got them props Wasn't a thug, never been shot Running from God, man, turning my back Never would have made it, Marvin said, but he opened up my eyes and I can't look back. But they look surprised, I just took my cap. Yeah, he did it, he did it. He changed me and I'm with it. He made me what I'm supposed to be. You get close to me, you might get it. We ain't supposed to be here. Never thought we'd see it. Now we live and prove to the world. I'm supposed to be dead or in jail right now. <laughs> Congratulations. But I said I'm sharing my gift with the world. They told us we was nothing, now I know they Turn it. up. Working her way through college, uh, trying to put food in her son's mouth. On the pole for them dollars. She was looking for some solace. Told the Lord, I promise. I'm headed to the hills with my heels on. Where the fields ain't attached to the bill, folks. No copy fields from no uncle fields. Just Phil Jackson, coach her. And get her out that game where they're losing their dignity for a coach first. No skirts, just skirt. Found another way around the road work. And left that fine establishment. It's like our whole life is having a growth spurt. She out the game and they hate it. She made it. Haters. They ain't nothing but some shellfish in a bucket. Probably get crabs if you touch it. Now she graduated from college. Scratch that. Graduated with honors. Little man got a little cap and gown. Looked at a match in his mama. Yeah. We ain't supposed to be Round of applause to all the ladies out there. Who didn't let anybody tell them what they could or couldn't be. And they kept their dignity while doing it. Congratulations. Proud of you, mama. Yeah.
dogs that stay down. Many people wishing I would fall on the way. My uncle told me, don't you start if you can't finish the race. And if you ain't gonna do it right, then don't you do it. Sydney Weaver and as you can tell we had a really awesome school year so we are just so thankful for every single student on the front row in the second row that has been a part of our program this year it's been a great great year so we're about to enter in a time of awards awarding and recognizing some of our amazing students so um, I get to hand out the female warrior award so the warrior is our mascot at CCA. So a warrior is someone who um, demonstrates our big three. Our big three are our three rules. That's the only rules we have at CCA is show up, do your work, and treat others with respect. So the student that I get to award today has been exemplary in all three of those areas. Show up. She had almost perfect attendance. Every day I could count on seeing this student greeting me with a smile, um, just being a presence in the space every single day. Do your work. This student completed more classes than any other student um, finishing today. She saw the finish line of graduation and she was determined to reach it and actually finished a little early. Treat others with respect. This student has been a shoulder to lean on, an advocate, a cheerleader for her peers, her classmates, um, and everyone she knows and she's a leader and one day we will we hope to see her back on this stage as a CCA staff or maybe our commencement speaker one day so the female warrior award goes to Kaylin Burley <laughs> Okay, I'm here to present the uh, Male Warrior Award. And for this student, uh, I would like to share just a couple of quotes about what it means to be a warrior. Uh, so as Ms. Sydney said, part of it is our big three, showing up, doing your work, and treating others with respect. But also, every great warrior must learn to endure and overcome the adversities of life. A warrior takes responsibilities for their actions, even the most trivial of actions, and an average person acts out their thoughts and never takes responsibility for them. This student, uh, specifically, we saw them go above and beyond just showing up. We saw them go above and beyond just doing their work, and we saw them go above and beyond just treating people with respect. And uh, each day I saw this student show up, and if we had a perfect attendance award for our students, then this person would have gotten that. And then in the first, in the first quarter, uh, we had those conversations about why they could have gotten the perfect attendance award. Uh, and uh, this student, we've had many uh, conversations. Um, I probably have not been harder on anyone else uh, at CCA. Um, and it's because I can see the potential. And you see the potential of every single student in here. We saw that, and so we kept pushing. And so this year's uh, Warrior Award recipient is Braylon Jones. happy to present the award for the it's called the Beckett Award and the Beckett Award is given in by name that the founders were the Becketts and they had a great deal of respect and a great deal a uh, goal to help people with their academics and so I am presenting the academic award the the Beckett Award now this student who's going to get the Beckett Award today um, came to our school, embraced the atmosphere, contributed to the culture of the school, took advantage of 
all the case management opportunities that were needed to make her successful, and I want to present the Beckett Award to Cadence Pace. Katie enrolled in January and graduated at the end, in the middle of the fourth quarter, so she really worked hard. Okay, now we are having a little bit of a wonderful problem, and that is some people do not have a place to sit down. So if you have a little extra space near you and you could kind of scrunch toward the middle and leave some space on the outside or somewhere people can fill in, if there's space next to you, will you just raise your hand? Okay, there's some spaces up here on second row. Also, I want to acknowledge uh, Mr. Jason Shung, um, who's on our board of directors as well. Jason, here at the back. And there's also a spot for you up here, Jason, if you'd like to sit. Up to you. You're the boss. All right. Okay, we want to make sure everybody's comfortable. Okay, I have the, um, I forgot to ask, hang on. I forgot to ask what the name of my award is, but it is Beckett. Okay, so my, I get to give another Beckett Award. Now, Jim and Jane Beckett, who started our school, were 80 years old the year they started CCA. They had no background in education, but they just believed that students could succeed and achieve if they had a small family-like atmosphere where people noticed if they were missing every day. And they also loved reading and academics. They just felt like if you could read and apply yourself, you could learn anything, you could accomplish anything. So the student that I get to recognize today um, participated in a little activity that I got to do on Friday mornings that I just probably enjoyed 10 times more than the kids. In fact, when I asked them to do this contest, they said, Ms. Christie, we're really just doing this because you're so excited about it. We, were, we don't even really care that much. But that just goes to show sometimes someone else's enthusiasm can create a spot for you to do something great. So this year, we tried to enter a contest where students made a poster or a photograph that captured this idea of how civics and civility can impact how we understand the law, government, and democracy so that we can create a better world together. And so we had a couple of students that entered. We, placed, uh, we went on a field trip. We had a guest speaker. We did so many things to just learn about this topic. But this one student used his artist eye, his technology skills, and thinking and applying the contest to place first place in the city of Dallas for his photo and second place in the state of Texas for his photo. I'd like to recognize Mr. Don Liggins. Seniors, what's up? What's up? I'm very proud of each of you. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss each one of you, especially my favorite. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, you know who you are. You know who you are. All right. Um, so I'm here to present the Overcomer Award for uh, CCA. So. Um, we recognize overcomers because life rewards their hard work with achievement and accomplishment. We recognize a student who demonstrates resolve, tenacity, determination, and grit. The student who, while tempted to give up, finds a way to say, not today. Uh, one thing that life has taught me personally is that we all experience pain and trauma in our lives, but we don't have to let that pain or trauma define us. Uh, we can choose to be a victim, or we can choose to be an overcomer. And that's one of the best things about working here. The staff will tell you, we get to see students overcome so much, even just to get to school, but to make it to this point, they overcome so much. So 
Uh, I'm going to tell you about this young lady. Uh, people who know her will tell you she's respectful, caring, kind, gentle, and soft-spoken. She's selfless and she thinks about others before herself, but don't, mix, don't mistake that for weakness or don't mistake that for being soft because she's intelligent, hardworking, and fights adversity like a champion. Um, there were many times during the school year when she would, she would call me or she would tell me, Ms. Terrible, I don't know, I don't know if I can keep doing this, uh, but she did. She just, she just kept going and I was really inspired by her. So um, I watched her get stronger and I want to award Miss, wait, who is it? <laughs> uh, Miss Brianna Bell. So I'll now be presenting the Male Overcomer Award. Um, I second everything Mr. Herb said about being an overcomer. And first off, all of you are overcomers. You have all overcome something. Um, this student that I get to highlight, not, over, over, not only overcame, but overcame with a smile. There's something about an individual who overcomes and can bring others along with them as they overcome. There's something about being able to light up a room with laughter. There's something about being able to light up a room with jokes and just joy. And this individual that I get to present this Overcomer Award, not only not let his pain become him, but he used it to actually spark joy, laughter for all those around him. And so the male Overcomer for this year is the Quaylen Henry. At this time, I will have my rising seniors stand and come to the stage. So today we're celebrating our graduates, but we're also celebrating those students who have done tremendous work over the course of a school year. And so we have two academic programs here at CCA. We have Pathway 1, which is for individuals who have identified, I'm going into the workforce, and I want to do that as strong as possible. So they complete their high school equivalency, and they do vocational training. And that's our Pathway 1 students. They have to pass all four sections of the GED test in order to complete schooling. So these amazing individuals that I get to celebrate today, they haven't completed all four, but they have passed at least one, which is, which is an amazing feat. And so, first, I would like to celebrate our rising senior, Mr. DeQuaylen Henry, who has passed social studies and science. The next rising senior that I would like to celebrate is Samuel Foster, who passed ELA, Social Studies, and Science.
So coming back, Sam would just have to complete math. Next, we have our rising senior, Ms. Kennedy Doty, who has passed social studies. Okay, if I could share really quickly, uh, one, of the, one of the most beautiful moments of the school year happened uh, with Kennedy where uh, she passed her social studies test, and I teach social studies, um, but she had been trying to pass this test a couple of times, and she was discouraged, and I told her, we're going to get this test. We're going to figure it out, and we're going to pass this test. And so we did some things. We made a plan. I said, we're going to make a plan, and we're going to stick to it, and we're going to get to the end of that test, and right around Thanksgiving, uh, she got her score, and she looked over, and she said, I passed. I did it. And that was one of the most beautiful moments of the school year. So I just wanted to share. Just wanted to share that moment. Congratulations. These students work very hard. Even if they pass one subject, we want to celebrate the hard work they put into it. And so we, I just wanted to shout that out. That's what it's about. Okay? Last but not least, our rising senior, Henry Morns, who passed the math subject. One more time, let's give our rising seniors a round of applause. I will now invite Mr. Billy Rose to come up and, in, and introduce our valedictorian. All right, good morning. I get to introduce our valedictorian, which as many of you know, the valedictorian is the student that had the highest grade point average this year. But I wanted to talk about, a little bit about the student first. She's a student that has put in a lot of work, overcome a lot. Um, but in particular, there's a thing in my Pathway 2 students will know, the thing we have called quiz passes, which are our students are working through quizzes and tests and they can earn quiz passes so that they could uh, get an automatic 100 on a, on a quiz. Uh, this student was so committed to academic excellence that I often had to try to force her to get a quiz pass. She, she wanted to do it herself. She always was very independent, and that resulted in her getting the highest GPA. And so without further ado, I want to introduce our valedictorian for this year, Ms. Ana Gallardo. CCA students, hope you are doing good today. I just wanted to start off with thanking my family and friends as well as my teachers. They have been supportive throughout this process and gave me too much encouragement. To the CCA students, I want to congratulate you on graduating. Many of us have had a hardship beyond comprehension. Some of us even lost loved ones and friends due to unexpected circumstances. From natural causes to gun violence. We've wept, yet we persevered. The odds have been stacked against us time and time, and yet here we are. I know you will make it through anything that comes your way. You may fail sometimes, but know that you are growing because of it, and you are becoming a better person by persevering. To those that have been there helping us through the whole way, on behalf of those, I thank you. 
We couldn't have done this without you being our pillar. And on that note, congratulations, class of 2023. Thank you, Anna, that was great. Um, I also get the honor of now um, introducing another great speaker, um, our commencement speaker, uh, Mr. Ken Smith. Uh, Mr. Ken Smith is a, a community leader. Uh, he's a lifelong South Dallas resident, a graduate of Lincoln High School, and he is the president of the Revitalized South Dallas Coalition. Uh, he's a man of faith, a man of God, and overall a, a leader in this community. He's worked very hard um, on his commencement speech, wanting to get to know every single student. Um, so I think he has crafted a great commencement speech that's going to be very applicable to all, to all of you. So without further ado, it's, uh, I'd like to introduce Mr. Ken Smith. When you get old, you have to have a lot of props. So I got my, my books, my notes, my Bible, all kinds of things. And I got an extra pair of glasses because I can't see well. <laughs> but I was introduced to CCA uh, years ago. But about a month ago, Ms. Christie invited me to come to the school. And I had the pri uh, privilege of uh, talking to about 10 people, I think, that were at What's happening? All right. I had a chance to uh, talk with uh, ten, about 10 students, and I think the others were coming. And we had a great time. I don't know about you, but I kind of fell in love with the school, and I kind of fell in love with the class. If you could stand where I'm standing right now and see you looking at me, you would have a smile that just would not go away. The last time I felt like this was at like a family reunion about five years ago because this is different because it is a family. I looked at some of the videos that the kids had made last year and that theme kept coming back. Family, family. I like the teachers because they're encouraging, they're supporting. It's, you're feeling, filling the gap that was left off and sometimes in some of your, uh, your, your challenges. And I promise I'm going to come back because I had a request, Ms. Ms. Uh, Christy uh, Quaylen and uh, uh, Cedric and Sam. All right, <laughs> we're, I'm going to come back and we're going to do a whole thing on real estate. That was their request. They wanted to know about real estate. And I know a little bit about real estate, and we're going to do that next year or as, as soon as I'm invited back. But what I wanted to really say is a little bit about myself, not much, but I want to tell you about the 17-year-old me. I grew up in South Dallas. I'm a twin. That's why I kind of connect with uh, uh, Sam and Cedric. Uh, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Mobley, Mr. Mobley is a twin, and I'm a twin. And when you have a twin, you have a special bond. And my brother and I, we are the closest two people on earth, and we argue and fight and fuss more than any two people you would ever imagine. But just like a family, no matter how much we fight and fuss, it doesn't change the fact that your family and your brother, and that is the thing that you are supposed to embrace in life. Amen. There are nine people on this side who are graduating with GED. There are nine people on this side who are getting their diploma. But there are 300 people in here today which is the village, the family, that created this first row. It doesn't matter if you made a mistake. It doesn't matter if you failed. 
My uncle used to say that my uncle was a real cool guy. He says, that ain't nothing for a stepper. You something, somebody throws something in your way, you slide to the left like you're doing a, a, one of the R. Kelly dances. You slide to the left, you slide to the right, you jump over it, ain't nothing for a stepper. I feel like an imposter today. Imposter syndrome is you, you get recognition, somebody says something about you, but you don't feel that you really, really deserve it. Because the commencement address has already been made. Nine over here and nine over here. You are the commencement address. You have gone through the challenges. You have made all kinds of decisions, some of them really bad. But it doesn't matter how many bad decisions you make, it is how many decisions you make to take a direction different from the bad course. And the difference between a child, which you were yesterday, and the adult that you are today is that you are in charge of what happens to you for the next 70 years. Nobody else, you are in charge. Now that is hard. When you were young, somebody told you when to get up, what to put on, where to go, how to act, who to talk to, who not to talk to, all that thing. You had all those rules that you had to do and somebody was over there watching you most of the time. Now it's changed, it's flipped. People are now looking to you, bro, looking to you, Kalium. I know your names because I study. They're looking to you because you switched places from those being fed to a place of those feeding. And that means when people elevate you, you need to stand up to that level of expectation that you have within yourself and that level of expectation that other people have in you. Do not make the mistake of making this all about you. Now, you, sh you should in some cases because you did the work. But this crowd of witnesses this 300, this family, this friends, even your enemies created the opportunity for you to be here today. Thank you for them. When someone says, oh, she's not gonna ever do anything, oh, she's got three babies, or she ain't got no whatever, or whatever, whatever, all you got to say, you don't have to even confront them. All you've got to do is be. Be who God made you to be. My favorite book of all time, besides the Bible, Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. I like to read one page, because that sets the stain. Yes, sir. He's going to be our new president right here. This sets the stage and the theme for everything I wanted to say today and what God had for you. Listen, I was scared. I speak all the time. This time I was scared because I had the imposter syndrome because anybody on the front row could do a better speech than me just by telling you their story. But let me get my other glasses. Where are they? Here we are. That's what happens when you get 70. Here we go. Because God made you for a reason. He also decided when you would be born and how long you would live. He planned the days of your life in advance, choosing the exact time of your birth and death. The Bible says, you saw me before I was born and scheduled each day of my life before I began to breathe. Every day was recorded in your book. God also planned where you'd be born and where you would live for his purpose. Your race, your nationality are no accident. 
God left no detail to chance. He planned it all for his purpose. The Bible says from one man, he made every nation. He determined the time set forth and the exact places where they would live. Nothing in your life is arbitrary. It is all for purpose. Moving forward. Most amazingly, God decided how you would be born. Regardless of the circumstances of your birth or who would be your parents, God had a plan in creating you. He does, it doesn't matter whether your parents were good, bad, or indifferent. God knew that those two parents were good, uh, uh, were individuals that possessed exactly the right makeup to create the custom you in mind. They had the DNA God wanted to make for you. While there are illegitimate parents, there are no illegitimate children. Many children are unplanned by their parents, but they are not unwanted by God. God's purpose <laughs> took into account human error and even sin. God never does anything accidentally. He never makes mistakes. He has a reason for everything he creates. Every plant, every animal has plans, was planned by God, and every person was designed on purpose and custom. <laughs> so when somebody tells you or asks you who you are, you are part of a cosmic plan thousands and millions years of years ago before he even knew 22 years ago that there was going to be a Calium or a, a Anna or a Cedric or, or a Qualian uh, or Alexius, all these names. Uh, he decided way a million years ago, I'm going to make me a, 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 a Braylon. I'm going to make me a Braylon. I'm going to make him about, he, he's going to come on the scene about 19 years ago, I'm going to give him a mom and a dad, I'm going to put him in, what, De DeSoto? DeSoto, see I knew you, you, don't, you didn't realize I knew you. I'm going to put you in DeSoto, I'm going to put you in this high school, I'm going to put you with all these people. You are not an accident. He has you, every one of you, in place, in Dallas, at this point in time, right now, right here, because what happens to you impacts somebody else. I have, how much time, where's my timekeeper? Is it 10 minutes? It's 10 minutes, okay. I got five more minutes. My, uh, my computer uh, crashed the other day. Uh, it was Chrome, my Google Chrome messed up. And I called Geek Squad, I have a you know, Geek Squad account, and I said, you know, called them on Monday and said, listen, my Chrome is not downloading, blah, 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 blah. And they went in and did their diagnostic, they took over my machine and did all this stuff and configured it, didn't work. The next day, I called again. They sent somebody from India, you know, you talk to somebody from India and they tell you all about what's wrong. They tried to fix it, didn't work. Uh, Ify, I, they called me the, the four, five, and six time I called Geek Squad, it didn't make it work. The last person I talked to says, Mr. Smith, we're going to have to go back to the maker, Google Chrome. We don't know how to fix it. It's their problem. They can tell us how to fix it. And they sent somebody to my house and they fixed it. What's the point? If you're created by Google Chrome, or you're created by God, or whoever your deity is, he's the only one that can tell you what he made you for. He made you. Geek Squad couldn't fix my computer. They had to go back to the maker. When you have a problem in life, ladies and gentlemen, young people, sit down, be quiet, go to your maker, 
and ask, what is the purpose of this? You aren't going to know. You aren't, you aren't Geek Squad. Geek Squad is great. I love it. It's worth the $200 I pay for a year for it. But the maker is the one who determines what he wants you to do and how he wants you to live. You've got to know your gifts. Your gifts are whatever you write down and that you say that they are. You, have, you, do, you may not know all of your gifts. Mine, I knew one or two gifts even when I was a young person. I knew I could speak well. I knew I could write well. But I was painfully shy in, and withdrawn and wouldn't be able to make this speech when I was 17 or 18. I would not be able to do it. How is it that a shy, introverted guy from South Dallas ended up being a person, you would think, and I'm an extrovert, right? I'm not. If I was in a social setting, I would be in the back of the room looking and watching. That's what I've always did because I was too afraid as a, a kid to step out with confidence. But when I went to college, I was thrown into the deep. And what I mean the deep is no mom, no dad, no guidance. All I had was what was up here that they taught me, and I had to apply it. That's the difference between being a child and the difference between being an adult. You have to apply it. But when you align your goals and objectives with the Lord's and God's goals and objectives, you will succeed at whatever you want. It's not about you. It's about what you leave as a legacy for someone else. All right? Your, my gift was something called discernment. I don't know, ever since I was a kid, I knew this. I would be able to sense how a person was feeling. I would be able to sense that there was something right or wrong. I could go into a situation and sense there was danger. I could sense something. I don't know how and why I have that, but I, t I told Miss, Miss, Miss Christie, and we had a, an experience that we shared together. We went to lunch one day downtown, and I told the class, and this is something I really do, every day in the morning I say, Lord, this is my plan for today. This is what I'm going to do. I said, make it align with what you want to happen. And years ago, God told me something. He says, Ken, if you look at everyday life as if every person you meet that day has a gift for you, it changes the way you look at everyday life. The mundane, going to the grocery store, getting gas, all that stuff we have to do every day, there is eternal significance in every little thing. Me and Christy had a nice lunch. We had talked with the class. I meet a guy walks up to me at the restaurant parking lot, and he's asking for money. He gives me this long sob story that I don't believe because I've heard every story in the world. If you live in South Dallas, you know you've heard every story there is on how why I need money. Got to talking to this guy. He, want, he wanted money from me, and I had none. God said, I want you to meet somebody and you each other change each other's life. Within 15 minutes of talking to the guy, this guy was my long lost cousin from Streetman, Texas, who I had never met before. Because I prayed that morning and said, open my eyes to whatever you want me to experience today. And I met a long lost cousin. Had I not had that, had he walked up to me, I would have blew him off and said, man, I ain't got no money for you. But I met a lifelong cousin and we reconnected. He's still on the street, but now we've got some help. Hold on, no, 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 no. My responsibility, I can't save him. He's got to save himself. But what we did do, I went down to Streetman, which is 75 miles south of here, and met with other cousins, and now they have coming up here to meet and find him. It's the beginning of a connection. 
That's all I'm saying. Take every single day that you have and see every possibility that the God gives you, no matter if it's mundane, no matter if it's big, it's you and everybody else with you. It's 15 minutes, right? I'm finished. I didn't even, I didn't even go over some of the stuff I brought, but <laughs> y'all, this day, I'm, I have a discernment. I am feeling from you all of what you're giving, and I'm going to deflect what you're giving, which is good, and put it to the 18. This is the star of the show. I'm just a low light. Thank you very much. Now the time we all been waiting for. Yeah. So before we get started, once again, so uh, we have two academic pathways that student has, students have worked amazingly hard to get through. We have our pathway one, our students who are destined for the workforce. They completed their GED, all four sections, and they're also working through vocational curriculum to be good to go for that. We have our pathway two, who did a traditional high school diploma, and they're more set towards a college ready course, all right? Both sets of students have worked so hard, and I cannot wait to, the, to award these diplomas. At this time, I'm going to have my pathway one students rise and meet me at the edge of the stage. Now again, I told you that a CCA graduation is a little bit different. When I call the student's name, feel free to celebrate, praise, do whatever the Lord puts on your spirit. The students will also have an opportunity to come to this podium and give a quick shout out of whatever the Lord put on their spirit also. And so again, celebrate, enjoy this moment because you all, the families, the students, you all have worked so hard to get to this point. Our first graduate of the Pathway One is Ms. Brianna Bell. Um, I want to thank the whole entire CCA staff. I want to thank my mama, and I want to thank God for letting me come this far. And yes, shout out to Harvey, Mr. T. Next we have Ms. Demaria Bell. Um, <laughs> so I want to say thank you to my family and for the CCA staff for believing in me. And thank you for my son for believing in me and keeping me motivated. So thank you. Next we have Mr. River Dalek. I want to say thank you to my mom and CCA number of all because I know I've been through some really rough times and they've always been there to help me out. 
I'm gonna thank my mom for every single time that I've had a problem, every single time I needed to talk about something, or even she would even sit there and let me rant for hours for no reason. And she would just sit there and say, okay, listen to me. So I thank you all for helping me out through this. It took me five years to get here, but I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Next we have Mr. Cedric L. Foster. All right, All right. hey y'all. I would like to thank everybody that came. I would like to thank my friends and family. I would like to thank CCA staff and to the class of 2023. We started from the bottom, now we're here, you know, but no, 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 no. One more, one more, one more, one more. We did it, yeah! Next we have Mr. Michael Givens. Yeah. I want to I want to thank uh my mama, my sister, my cousins, my auntie, you know what I mean, for y'all believing in me and being there, the staff of CCA, all the students and stuff for encouraging me, my nephews and stuff for being my encouragement to keep going. And yeah, man. Next we have Mr. Braylon Jones. First off, how y'all doing today? <laughs> That's good. I want to thank uh, my granny back there. I, uh, mommy, if you're here, I want to thank you too. My cousin. Uh, CCA, everybody, uh, yeah, thank you. Next we have Miss Mariah Molina. Uh, I'd like to thank my sister and my nephew and the CCA staff. Yeah. <laughs> 
Next we have Tracy Molina. Hello, I just want to give a big shout out to my best friends back there. Woo! <laughs> and I also want to thank the CCA staff for walking me through this journey. I'm really like, <laughs> y'all do not understand how thankful I am to be here. This is a long journey. I want to thank all my peers. I want to thank the volunteers. I want to thank all y'all for coming out here. I want to thank everybody. <laughs> And rounding out our Pathway One graduates, we have Miss Candice, I mean Miss Cadence Marie Pace. Don't cry, don't cry. I would like to thank all of CCA and everyone involved within CCA for helping make this possible, and also thank you to everyone who showed up for me. At this time, I'll have all of my Pathway 2 graduates stand and meet me at the end of the cave. <laughs> Kicking off our Pathway 2 graduates, Antoine Bro. So I'm gonna just say thank you to all the supporters out here. Thank you to my family that's standing up at the back. And thank you, Men and Nehemiah, as well. I wanna say thank you to all the staff members of CCA. And it's a parade inside my city, yay. Next we have Miss Kalem Burley.
Next up we have Ms. Contea Coleman. thank my family that came to support me. I want to thank CCA for the support, motivation, and that's awesome. Next, we have our valedictorian, Ms. Anna Gallardo. I'd like to thank CCA for always being there and always trying to get me into school. And then my family, because they always are there. <laughs> Next we have Ms. Akaya Jenkins. Next we have Mr. Don Ligon. So uh, I want to shout out my mom in the corner right there. Um, <laughs> I want to shout out the CCA staff. I love everybody at CCA, but I want to give a real specific shout out to my pathway, P2. Shout out Mr. Billy. Next we have Ms. Tashana Miller. So this year I had a really hard year. I lost my dad from COVID. 
Um, I started out pregnant at the beginning of the school year, and I want to thank everybody for letting me come back and finish and believing in me. I've been coming here for three years, and honestly, y'all have become my family. So I just thank y'all. Next we have Miss Tiandra Patton. First, I want to thank God. For allowing me to be here today. I want to thank everybody that came out supporting me. My teachers, the students, everybody. Um, and most important, I want to thank my cousin, because I couldn't have did it without you. And rounding out our class of 2022-2023 graduation, Miss Alexis Washington. <laughs> um, I just want to give all the praise to God. I just want to thank my family for coming out. Despite our loss yesterday, I'm just so thankful y'all can still make it. Um, I want to thank my husband for just carrying me through every journey of my life. And I want to especially thank my mama. <laughs> Without her, I wouldn't even be standing here today. So, and I want to just tell my class that this is just the beginning. This is not the end. Graduating seniors, you may now turn your tassels from the left to the right. <laughs> 
to all of family, friends, community partners, South Dallas community at large, and the world. It is our pleasure to present to you the graduating class of 2022-2023. Graduates, please remain standing. I will now invite Mr. Tyree Mobley up to do our closing prayer. Okay, thank you all for coming. Let's give another round of applause for our 2023 graduates. So proud of y'all. With each student name that was called, I remembered the journey and tried not to cry. So let me give you a couple instructions. We're gonna have uh, uh, some time uh, for us to celebrate together at our new school site. It's called the Phyllis Wheatley School. Okay, Phyllis Wheatley School is the future home of CCA. You just go out these doors to your left on Metropolitan and you'll run right into the school on your left hand side. I will have food for you, we'll have tables set up, so please join us, bring family. Feel free to either pick up food to take with you or stay and sit with us for a little while, kick it with us, okay? Um, lastly, uh, if, you, if you drove here and you parked in that lot, it's, the school is within walking distance. The parking over there is limited, so we don't have very many spaces. Uh, if you are able uh, and uh, willing, please walk over to the spot because we don't have that much parking. The second thing I want to tell you is that uh, at the school site, we, we won't have uh, indoor bathrooms, but we do have porta potties available there for you. Uh, and again, we have plenty of seating for you. So please join us. We would love to see you at the new school, whether you stay for five minutes or for a couple hours, okay? Uh, let me go ahead and pray, and then we can continue celebrating. Please bow your heads and close your eyes with me. Father God, thank you for each and every one of these graduates. God, thank you for their family that's here. Thank you for cousins, aunts, uncles, moms, dads, grandparents that have come to celebrate all the hard work that our students have put in this year just to get to this point. God, you made them for a purpose, and God, just like we said today, this is just the beginning. Over this time, they've been developing, learning, growing, stretching themselves, being pushed, pushing back, all those things, God you are glorified in it. So we pray you would be with us. God, we pray blessing over this meal. We thank you for every volunteer and person who has put this together so that we can celebrate uh, along with our graduates. God, would you be with us? Keep us safe as we leave this place. Protect us, protect the ones that we love. We thank you and we give you all the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, feel free to take pictures with your graduates and we'll be heading over in just a few minutes. Graduates, please remember to get your graduation bags at the front of the church. Graduates, please grab your graduation gifts from the front of the church. <laughs> 